right, we're doing another vlog. I haven't done one of these in quite a while. Uh, been out on the road, went back to driving a tractor and trailer full time. So uh, I've been doing a lot of photography out here on the road. It's been about six months since I've done one of these videos, so let's try it again. Oh, and uh, I'm filming this on a Nikon, so a lot of people think I'm insane. And uh, today I want to talk about these little jewels, the speed light, flash. Uh, some of y'all are afraid of it. You know, like this thing's going to attack you or something. Uh, it's an easy device to use once you figure some things out. And we're going to go over some of the terminology and some of the basics of using a speed light. And one of those basics is let's get into the terminology, some things you hear. Let's start out with the modes that the speed light operates in. If you turn this on, you come into mode, you have one that says M. I don't know if you can see it from here or not, but M means manual. And all that means is now I have complete manual control over this flash. I can set the power I want this flash to operate at from 1 32nd on this one all the way to 1 to 1, which means 100%. So it's just a fraction, it's just a percentage of the amount of power the flash puts out. There's some neat things that happen with that percentage though, and we're going to talk about that in a little bit. Mode number two we're going to talk about that's important is TTL. If you're a Nikon user, it'll be ITTL. If you're a Canon user, it'll be ETTL. I don't know what Sony uses, so if y'all Sony users, this is TTL. That's all you need to know, it's TTL. TTL means through the lens. That means that the metering system in your camera sends information to the flash. And the camera and the flash makes a decision on what kind of light you're going to get out of the flash. How much? So just it's an automatic mode. It has a lot of uses, and you can use exposure compensation to control that to help you out. I use it a lot when doing macro photography. I use it a lot on all kinds of photography. So, TTL, remember that term. Then, if you go in here, you have, hold on here, S1 and S2. Let me get around here again. Manual mode S1. That means that if another flash around you fires, this flash is going to fire as a slave. It's a cool thing. That means I can control this flash from other flashes. So I can put it somewhere else in the room and use the pop-up flash on my camera or another flash to set this one off. Pretty cool. Now, S1 means it's going to go off on the first flash. So if you're using TTL on your camera or using red eye reduction, you can't use S1. You use S2. S2, right here, S2 gives you the flash on the second flash the flash makes. When you have a flash set in TTL or red eye reduction mode, it's going to have a really short pre-flash. You're not going to see it. It's so short that your eyes can't see it. But it's a really short pre-flash. And then the flash is again with the full flash that the camera calls for. So, if you set this up for S2, it skips the pre-flash. And then fires on the regular, on the flash, the full power flash. That way, you don't get this flash firing at the wrong time. Get all kinds of weird things happening pretty handy to know. So those are the basic modes of this flash, things you need to know. The other big thing you need to know is what's called sync speed. Every camera has a different sync speed. This little D5300 that I'm filming this on syncs at 1 200th of a second. That means you cannot exceed that speed with the shutter or you'll start getting a black line that creeps up the bottom of the picture. So if you ever shoot in a picture and you're using a flash and all of a sudden you get this black line at the bottom of your picture, that's because your shutter speed was set too fast for the flash. You were exceeding the sync speed. 
but there is a caveat to that. It's called high speed sync. This cheap Chinese flash, which we'll talk about a little later on, does high speed sync, which means I can actually push this flash to one eight thousandth of a second, which is really cool because now I can use this flash to shoot things that I need a really fast shutter speed on, like I'm trying to freeze motion. And the flash helps you with that too. We're going to come back to that. So, a couple of little key facts there you needed to know. Just remember, TTL means it's basically running an automatic. Manual means you're controlling the flash. S1 means it's going to be used as a slave and fire off another flash as long as the one you're controlling it with is not in TTL or red eye reduction. S2 means I'm using another flash to shoot this that's in TTL. So those are the basics. So some cool things going on here. We talked about helping you freeze motion and this is where speed lights come into their own. People are afraid of these things. They want to use continuous lights and continuous lights have their place too. If I'm, you know, shooting portraits, I've got someone sitting still for long periods of time, and I have all kinds of control of the light in a room, they can be cool. It is a little easier a long time because you can see what your exposure is going to be. With a speed light, that's one thing you don't get. That is a downside to speed lights is you cannot see your exposure. You kind of have to guess, have knowledge about what's going on, and then make your shot and then make adjustments off of it. It's not a big deal. So, we're gonna talk about freezing motion. These flashes make a very short blast of light. And the lower the power setting is for most flashes, the shorter that blast of light is. And we're talking in thousandths of a second. And the cool thing of that is, is because that flash is so quick, it'll actually help you freeze motion. So let's say I do macro photography and I got a little bug crawling around and I'm using fairly low power because the flash is really close to what I'm shooting. Well, it helps freeze the motion of whatever that insect is. And that gets into the next thing we need to talk about is we need to talk about light. Light fall off. You know, understand that light is controlled by the power of the light source and the distance the light source is to whatever your subject is and the angle the light is at your subject. The angle gives you shadows or no shadows. The distance helps control how much light hits your subject. So you can have the flash real close, it's going to produce a lot of light on your subject. Probably overexpose it. Too far away, the subject's going to be dark. So, and that's the same with continuous lights too, is that distance and power are same with continuous lights. But here's where the big difference comes in. This flash, when it flashes, produces a big blast of light compared to a continuous light of this size. And I have a continuous light here. I have this little cheap young now. It's a 160 LED light. And you can see it makes a lot of light. But this doesn't hold a candle to what this puts out at 100%. So there's a lot of handy things you can do with this that are very difficult to do with this. This, as you can see, is big and wide, which is good because big lights are softer but I can modify this to make it bigger and softer. This is more directional, so I have more control of my shadows, and I can do all kinds of neat things with that. So, short video, basics of one of these. You have good control of your camera. Get your speed light and start playing with it. Learn how to use a speed light. Learn how to use modifiers for the speed light. We have soft boxes you can put on them that they'll soften the light. I have a small one right here. But don't, don't 
everything else out on the floor. This small soft box here, it Velcros onto the top of the light. It's a cheap little device, but it's very, very functional. Now, as you can see, the source got bigger so I softened the light up and it diffused it. So it's not as harsh. It softens the edges of the shadows, makes images look better. Also, I use this on times when doing macro because it helps get light over the end of the lens. But these are modifiers and there's all kinds of modifiers. There's soft boxes, there's uh, diffusers, there's soft boxes with grids, uh, there, there's snoots, there's bounce cards. And even there's modifiers you don't think about because if you're in a white room, you can turn that sucker around and bounce it off a white wall. And that white wall just became one big flash modifier and soften that light up. So that's what I'm saying. Learn to use one of these. It's a handy device. Once you learn how to use it, you'll swear by it. Especially if you're in an environment where you're trying to shoot things that are moving or your areas where you don't want people to blink because I'll tell you, continuous light, you blast a bunch of light in someone's face and the next thing you got a bunch of pictures of people going, you don't want that. You won't see their eyes. You know? So, because this is not on when you first hit the shutter, people blink less. So you're not getting that squint-eyed look. You're getting to see people's eyes and you get a nice catch light in the eyes. So this is basics of one of these. Uh, this is a short video just done from the cab of the truck. Sometime in the near future, I will get out and about and we will do some photography with the speed light. Probably go do some macro photography when, the war when it warms up so you can kind of get an idea of controlling the speed light. But the basics of it are, if you put it in TTL, the camera does most of the work. And if it's in TTL, if it's too bright, just turn the flash compensation down. Make the flash compensation darker. You'll find that control in the manual for your camera. And then you can use the camera's compensation to control the image in the camera and the flash compensation to control how you expose your subject. It's the last key thing I want to tell you about a speed light. The camera exposes, you set your camera's exposure, sorry, for the background. You set the exposure for your speed light for the subject. So the camera is set to get whatever you're wanting in background exposure. And your speed light is set to light your subject to get proper exposure on your subject. So always remember that. Using a speed light, camera does the background, speed light does the subject. That way you get a completely properly exposed image the way you want it. If you ever wanted an Instagram or some of these sites where you see these pictures where they're in a bright day, but the background's very subdued. It's darker than what it should be on a bright day, but the subject was backlit, but looks fully exposed and beautiful. Well, it was either done with a studio strobe or a speed light to light the subject to overcome the backlighting. So the camera was set for the background, the speed light was set to light the subject. So go out and play with it. I'm hoping this was informative. I'm hoping I got you over some of the nervousness of using a speed light. Simplest thing on the planet. You know, get out there and shoot some. Have fun. Oh, just by the way, money saving tip. This is a $60 speed light from Best Buy. It is a cheap Chinese, it's a Sun Pack. DF4000U. It works on both Canon and Nikon. It's a low cost $60 flash. Now, I wouldn't buy this to do professional work, but I would buy it as a good, just beat up, all around flash. It's what I use it for. I haul it around in the truck with me. I use it for when I'm going out doing macro for myself, just to have a good time. If I had to depend on it to make money, it's going to be something better than this. But just for fun, this is perfect, and it's cheap, and it does high-speed sync, and it does all kinds of other effects. 
and it works on both Canon and Nikon and TTL. So you get a lot of functions for 60 bucks. So just a cheap little blurb here. I don't get anything out of it, but I want to save you money. Cheap blurb. Y'all have fun.